Hello and welcome back to the next episode. This one is really going to be a grumpy old man. This is going to be a rant like Jonathan Pye does about the thing that really gets on my tits the most at the moment and that's the current UK political situation. Honestly, I sit here incredulous watching it turning out every day thinking it can't get any worse and every day it seems to get worse. So hold on to your seats. This is going to be a lively one. This is going to be a real grumpy old man negative uh, episode. Let's start with Covid. I'm sure it was all broken long before Covid but Covid sort of brought out the worst in what we've got as a government in the UK. My dad died at the start of Covid, nothing to do with Covid. We had to have the funeral during the Covid uh, lockdown. Uh, no more than five people couldn't approach the coffin. It was a dreadful, dreadful, dreadful funeral. I know there are millions of people that have had much worse than me. Lost family members couldn't even go and see them while they were dying. There was a lot of horror stories about people losing loved ones to COVID. No doubt, I don't question COVID was a dreadful thing. What, what I'm questioning is the way it was handled and how we were lied to about it. So the lies were wholesale, really. Um, there's all this thing about we're ring fencing all the old people's home, testing people when they come out of hospital before we put them into an old people's home. Turns out, no, you weren't. You were just ramming them out of the hospitals, throwing them into any homes infected with COVID or not, straight into an old people's home. Completely. I'm sorry if the camera's shaking there. My cat's decided to jump down on my desk. Um, they were turning people out of hospitals, infected or not with COVID. And bear in mind, at the beginning of COVID, we didn't have a test for it. You know, you had symptoms that could or couldn't be COVID or might not be COVID. We didn't really have testing early on. Um, we were told that they were ring fencing our old people's homes. The ones we couldn't go into and see our dying relatives in. They're ring fencing them. Turns out they weren't. They were just shifting people out of the hospital straight into old people's homes. Unbelievable. Just unbelievable. Then during lockdown, we're all locked down and they're still welcoming flights from Wuhan, the centre of Covid. And we're all locked down. And you just think, how can that be? How can you be locking down an entire nation, killing wholesale bus businesses right across the country, people's livelihoods, their incomes, literally annihilating the country and there you are at Heathrow welcoming flights from Wuhan and again early days no testing unbelievable and then there's the we're following the data well data's my job I actually when we were in the traffic light system I raised with my MP who happens to be Pretty Patel to be fair to Pretty Patel as a local MP she's pretty good you put a question to her she comes back with the answers you can't ask for much more than that from your local MP but I raised this traffic light system with her and I raised the fact that uh, if I find out there's MPs that have been profiting out of the traffic light system and the COVID tests that they were enforcing, all hell was going to break loose. We'll come on to that. Surprise, surprise, it happened. Um, but anyway, I raised the traffic light system when they were locking down on, on the data. Um, she sent me a letter from Grant Shapps and he... Um, explained to me that they were following the data. Then two weeks later, all the um, all the specialists that provided the government with the data about lockdown came out and said, the government aren't following anything we're saying. It has no resemblance at all. I've looked at the data. It had no resemblance to what they told us they were following. And again, total and utter lies, complete and utter bullshit. Then we find... The Track and Trace app, the app that was going to keep an eye on us all, make sure we were locking down, £35 million. Pounds. Just run that by again. £35 million pounds, and it never worked. Now, in any organisation, any private business, any, any business, you spunk £35 million pounds up the wall. And I can tell you, your feet don't touch the floor on the way out. Yet, where's that money gone? Who's, who's going to ask for it back? Out of all those people that took all that money, how many of them being told, what you took, you didn't deliver what you were paid for, we want our money back? 
Where's that money gone? And who's looking at that money? Thirty-five million pounds. I mean, we're not talking small change here. You know, when you think that you can start a business, or if you get a million pounds to start your business, you're considered hitting the ground running. If you want a technical startup, five, ten million is a you hit the ground running. Thirty-five million, and it still didn't even get delivered. Just unbelievable. Then we find there's. MPs in the House that are taking money, that is coming on to this, I said I'd come on to it, taking money from the Covid test companies, some of them on £100,000 salaries for doing the square root of fuck all. And they're getting all this money, which they haven't declared, um, and then they get found out. And, and what happens when they get found out? Well, one resigned, another one got fined £7,500. I'm sorry, but that's petty cash when you're taking that much money. It's not even a fine. It's like saying, oh, well, buy me a drink and it will go away. Especially when you consider the BBC licensing fee. If you get caught without a TV license, it's a £1,000 fine. Yet this guy gets off scot-free with £7,500 fine. Oh, and by the way, along the way, during all this, Boris Johnson's trying to protect those people, trying to change the rules so they don't get caught out. Just unbelievable how that can happen. We then had a member of the House of Lords caught for taking tens of millions. It's probably nearer to hundreds of millions of pounds when they look into it, but I can't prove that, of course. But certainly been caught for tens of millions of pounds for pushing through a PPE company that had never provided PPE in its life. Probably didn't provide most, from what we hear, um, most of the PPE was unusable anyway. Yet they got a... Uh, tens of millions of pounds for getting them uh, contracts for hundreds of millions of pounds with the government. Funnily enough, when they tried to track back where that had all gone, most of the money had gone offshore, so they couldn't track that either. Where's that going to come from? Who's going to be made to pay that back? Piers, nobody. You know, there's a big furore. It all gets very noisy. And it all quietly goes down. Yet nobody seems to be tracking this. Nobody seems to be accountable for any of this. And then to top it all, you've got Matt Hancock snogging his secretary after locking down the whole country. I mean, good luck to you snogging your secretary, mate. But honestly, if you were that bloody stupid to do it, you shouldn't be an MP. You shouldn't be organising a piss up in a brewery if you're that bloody stupid to be snogging your secretary during lockdown. And you just sit there and you just think, oh, my God, where is when's this going to end? And it just seems to get worse. Let's just cover Partygate. I mean, it was laughable. I mean, you know when you can't lie to your mum because your mum knows everything? You can't lie to your mum. Your mum can see through it. She might not tell you because she can see through it, but she can see through it. And when that Partygate thing came out and we watched Boris Johnson avoiding questions in Prime Minister's Question Time and Dominic Raab on the television being interviewed avoiding it. It was almost like Monica Lewinsky, um, you know, that Monica Lewinsky thing, you know, uh, every word was carefully thought to try and get out of answering the question or not say what actually happened. And we all knew, we all knew there'd been a party. Now, the, the question is, are you so bloody stupid as a prime minister that you're not going to think somebody took a picture at one of those parties or a video or an email or whatever if you're that stupid you shouldn't be an mp you certainly shouldn't be prime minister and it wasn't so much the party that drove me mad the party was pretty bloody annoying when i think of my dad's funeral and when i think of some of the people that never even saw their loved ones die were never with them but the party was annoying but it wasn't that that what really bugged me was the way he tried to lie his way out of it. You lying little toe rag. And you just sit there and you think, oh, my God, if he's lying about this, what's he lying to us about all the other things? How much can we trust? He says nothing. We can't trust a word that Boris Johnson says now. And it pretty much seems the same for all the MPs. They were all behind him. They were all helping him hide. They were all trying to get out of it. And then when it comes out, suddenly they all turn turncoat, knife him in the back, chuck him out. But they were all complicit in it. 
most of them, well, not most of them, some of them were at that party, um, but they were all complicit. They all knew those parties had been going on. Are you telling me my MP when I wrote, to, I, 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 I said to her, don't bother answering me because I'm not going to believe what you say anyway. And I'm quite sure you're not going to, uh, quite sure you're not going to uh, answer me, given that the prime minister won't answer anything. But it was the lying. It was the lying. And actually, it was the treating us as stupid. If he honestly thought we were that stupid, that's an insult as well. So he's lied to us and he's stupid enough to hold the party. And then he's insulted our intelligence by trying to get out of it and lie his way out of it. It's just unbelievable. Let's look at the consequences. And this seems to be the problem. There's no consequences for these people. Whatever they do, they seem to get away with it. So you spunk 35 million up the wall on an app that never worked. So what happens then? Well, you get promoted into another role because that one didn't work so well. We'll give you another chance. That wouldn't happen anywhere else. You would be accountable for that 35 million. Why did it go wrong? You know, somebody would be looking at where that 35 million went. And I've covered that already in one of you know earlier in my rants. But, but honestly, there seems to be no consequences. There were no consequences for these MPs. Well, one resigned, but that's only because he resigned. He could have stood his ground and got a fine of seven and a half grand, perhaps. But there seems to be pretty much no consequences for doing these stupid things. And a lot of it comes down to poor management or maybe just dishonesty. When you look at some of this money being pissed away, and there's no other term for it, pissed away, You've got a question, are they robbing us or are they just not capable of managing something? Could be both, of course, and probably likely it is both. But either way, there should be consequences for that. Certainly if it's being taken away dishonestly. Um, you take the MPs that were taking backhanders from COVID. To, we'll call them backhanders. They were called salaries. But, you know, we all know what that stands for. They were being paid money to help promote those testing companies within government. Um, I think they call it lobbying. I call it plain bloody dishonesty, especially if they haven't declared that money. Anyway, I got off on another rant again there, but the consequences of the problem. So one MP, one MP resigned, but if he'd stood his ground, he'd have probably got away with it, actually. Another one got fined seven and a half grand. Nothing, really, nothing. Partygate, Boris, uh, they spent millions looking into whether he'd lied or not. You don't have to spend millions. Look at him in the House of Commons at Prime Minister's question time and then say, was there a party? Uh, hello, it's that easy. You don't have to spend millions looking into whether he lied or not. We all knew he lied and, and it was dead easy to prove. It was it was the most basic lie. Even a school child couldn't get out of that lie, you know. Um, and what were the consequences? After millions of pounds spent, he could have got suspended for something like 40 days. That's a bloody holiday. He can go on holiday, come back and carry on. So after all that, the consequences are he's suspended for 40 days. It's just incredulous. When you think that if you lie to even a lowly court in the UK, if you lie under oath to a court, you can go to jail for two years for perjury. So how can you lie to the highest organisation in the, in the country, the, the organisation that sets the laws, that determines the laws, that runs the entire country? How can you lie to that and get away with a 40 day suspension? It is just incredulous. And they want to be called the right honourable. It would seem that most of their regulations are based on honour. Well, that's not going to work. I can tell you now, that's not going to work because not any of these buggers have got any honour whatsoever. There's so many liars in there. There's so many people caught with their fingers in the pie. Why the hell should we call them right honourable? Honestly, I've got much more words for them than honourable. Um, it's just unbelievable. So they need to change this honour system. If you get caught lying or you get caught with your fingers in the pot, you need to go to jail, just like anyone else. You get caught shoplifting, pinching stuff, defrauding people. You should go to jail. Send these lying buggers to jail. It's quite simple. 
you watch how quickly they are, how carefully they are about lying then. Understand that in the House of Commons, you're not allowed to accuse somebody of lying. Oh, dear me, no wonder they can get away with anything. I'd call them out, I'll tell you. So the long and short of all this is we can no longer trust our politicians. If we can't trust our politicians, we can't trust anyone. And that's a big problem. Politics now is dead. If you can't believe, I know we've always said politics lie, politicians lie. We've always said that. We've always known that their manifesto is never going to happen. Yeah, you know that when they come round, they're never going to be able to do it. It's a bit like the opposition always say, oh, I wouldn't do this and I wouldn't do that. Well, what would you do? Oh, I don't know, really. Um, you know, it's very easy in opposition to claim you wouldn't do something. But I think the long and short of it is now that we cannot trust any politician. We can't trust. It's not just what they say. We can't trust. We can't trust. They're not got their fingers in the pie, taking money or having been paid money to let's call it lobby, shall we, to use the right terminology, because it's it's it, it's taking money to to grease the right wheels in government. And the long and short of it, none of us can trust them anymore. And it doesn't matter what party. I'm not saying this is the, just the Conservatives. It, it would appear that pretty much any party that gets into power gets corrupted in that way. I thought the SNP were, you know, all very wholesome and everything else. And next minute we find there's an investigation into their funds. So it would appear we cannot trust any politician anymore. And that's a frightening situation because it means we effectively have no basis for government anymore. So what's the solution to this? Well, I'm, I've just accused the opposition of throwing in, I wouldn't do this, I wouldn't do that. All I can think is that a lot of these scumbags, and there's no other word for some of them, scumbags, um, are career scumbags. You know, they're making a career out of being in politics. But I think there was a time, and I may be, maybe I'm wrong and I'm looking at the glory days, but I'm pretty sure there was a time when politicians did it because they were looking for the good of the country. They were trying to improve things and trying to make things better for everybody. And their, their, their purpose was uh, very wholesome to try and get the country in a better state. Whereas now it would appear a lot of people go into politics because it's a good little number. It's a good little career choice. There's a lot of options. And that to me is is the problem. And I think probably we just need to clear the bloody lot of them out. And especially these career politicians, the ones that just, they'll swap to whatever party gets into power because they want to be in power. You know, they're not there for the good of the people or the country. They're there for the good of themselves. And I honestly think we've got to clear the lot of them out. Um, get rid of them all and start again. The main one, which I've already covered partly, is if you're caught with your fingers in the pie, you need to go to jail. There needs to be consequences. If you're caught lying, on such a large item. So if you're called out on something, is this true? And you barefaced lie about it, then you need to go to jail. There's no other way to deal with it. If you've lied about the country, about the management of the country, you should go to jail. It's, the consequences have to be there. There's just none at the moment. There's not even consequences that they'll lose their jobs because actually they seem to get back in whatever. People got very short term memories, but, but that's another whole other story. So how has this happened? Well, to be honest, we brought it on ourselves. We are responsible for it because we've let them get away with it. Do you remember the scandal when people were paying for duck houses on their ponds with expenses, having their moat cleaned with expenses? When that happened, we should have cleared that lot out. We should have kicked the bloody lot of them out because that told us what was going on. They got away with it, a bit like Putin. You know, he got away with it for so many years that he thought, ah, I'll get away with it when I invade Ukraine as well. And we were guilty for that because we let him get away with it. And the sign of a bully is you let them get away with it. They'll just keep going further, just like kids do. I mean, that's what kids do. They keep pushing until you pull them up. And these are like spoiled kids with no consequences. We've let them get away with it. And now when COVID came along and gave them the chance to to tear up that rule book because nobody was, everyone's in panic. Nobody was watching what they were doing. We saw the real politicians. So we, we're at fault. The other thing is people have got short term memories. We quickly forget 
how they got shafted by the government because six months before an election they start handing out all oh, sweeteners keep everybody happy make us look good so they they work to put all the good news in towards the towards the um uh, election and we've all got short-term memories incidentally can you imagine can you imagine what the french would have done when they caught them paying for duck houses on their ponds i mean the french you might you might not like the french for that but oh my god they wouldn't have put up with that crap i think a lot of this turned downhill when there's been a very and you may or may not have noticed this but i've watched it with interest slowly the term civil servant has been dropped. They, they're not civil servants anymore. They now govern us. They're a government. It's the same with local authorities. What used to be a council to serve you is now an authority. And if you watch, that subtle change of wording has been happening over five or ten years. But you'll notice now the term civil servant, almost unheard of now. But they need to go back to remembering that they're actually there to serve society, not govern it, certainly not pinch from it. I mean, that you'd think that goes without saying, but it doesn't seem to be. But I noticed this, this very gentle change from being a civil servant to being a governor. And, and I think that's a mistake. And I think that's, I think that's a, a very conscious move. There are words, they use their words very carefully. Um, and there's things like furlough and all these other words that, that, that sort of get brought into me in all sorts of things. But it's they're very carefully marketed words. And I do think that the scrapping or the slow killing off of the term civil servant, where they were reminded every day that they actually work for society, not govern them, not they're not an authority of them. Um, and even local councils now are claiming they're a local authority. They don't call themselves a council anymore. They call themselves a local authority. And in my book, they're not a bloody authority. They're there to serve the people, not manage them, not govern them, not control them. And that, to me, was, was quite a big change in when things start going wrong. You'd like to think that somewhere along the line, the press would be keeping an eye on the government. Um, and I don't, I'm not even sure that's true anymore. There was a time when the government couldn't get away with anything because the press would pick up on it. And I kind of feel now that the government are a bunch of scumbags and actually the press are a bunch of scumbags too. There seems to be quite a few times when the press and the government have some sort of deal that nothing will get reported. I'm thinking back to the um, the recent High Court case for the Back to 60 movement, the women whose pensions had been, their pension age had been moved to much higher, much later, and they were going to court to try and claim back their, their pension at 60, and lost of course. Nowhere in the media, nowhere. Yet Hugh Evans, who hasn't even broken the law, by the way, gets dragged through the through the ship by the by the gutter press. And I'm pretty convinced now that the press, you can't trust the press any more than you can trust the government. They're all a bunch of scumbags. And that makes it really difficult because there was a time when if the government did something really stupid, the press would pull them up. The press would be on their backs. If you want something really interesting, go to Channel 4 and watch Boris the Lord and the Russian Spy um, by Dispatches. It's shocking reading. And it turns out the press, some of the press, is actually controlled by an ex-Russian KGB agent. And you just sit there and you think this is just incredulous. So no wonder the press are not going to pull the government up. It's absolutely shocking. And it made me think... Oh, my cat wants a quick appearance in this. It made me think that actually our government is no better than Putin. At least Putin isn't pretending it's a democracy. I mean, he's pretty open. I'm robbing you. What are you going to do about it? Whereas, in a way, our government is doing exactly the same thing. There's no doubt we were robbed during COVID. There's no question we were robbed. It's been proven in many cases. But they're pretending it's a democracy. And that is even more frightening. So I'm going to put some reading in the bottom here. 
Um, this is assuming I don't get this cancelled by YouTube or threatened by a lawyer or whatever. You know, there's certain things I know I can't say in here and I've had to be a bit careful about. I'm going to put some, some reading in the links. Um, if you want to see somebody who really speaks their mind, Jonathan Pye, J-O-N-A-T-H-A-N, Pye, P-I-E, um, do a quick search on him. He's on Facebook. I think I'm sure he'll be on other media. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Yes, little outbursts, you know. Um, there's this uh, Channel 4... Uh, Boris the Lord and the Russian Spy by Dispatches. I'll put a link to that. Check that out. There's another very interesting thing on Netflix called The Spider's Web, Britain's Second Empire. It's about offshore money, including some prime ministers and their families. Um, very interesting watching. Um, and it turns out... I, I, believe the central banks of most countries are also shifting money around in offshore accounts to control their currencies and their exchange rates and things but it makes you realize there's an awful lot more goes on anyway we've got some comments as i say i'm not attacking one political party i'm attacking the whole bloody lot of them i'm pig sick of the lot of them i'm seriously thinking how i can go from here i certainly can't vote for any of them at the moment i'm thinking Reform UK, but I don't know. Um, probably shouldn't even announce that on here. Um, but for me, anyone that came along and said we're going to sweep out the whole bloody lot of them and start again, um, I would uh, I would definitely go for that option. I am pig sick of a lot of them. Um, and it just seems to get worse and worse. And just when you think it can't get any worse, it does. It, it's just incredible. Next episode, you'll be pleased to know, is going to be a bit lighter. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do yet. I'm thinking I might do um, an episode on what the Swedes call desk cleaning. <laughs> Sounds a bit bleak, doesn't it? Um, it's about clean your life out so that if you die tomorrow, you're not leaving everybody with a terrible mess. It's an interesting thing. I mean, it sounds terribly dark, but it's not actually. It's it's all about decluttering. And I have to do some serious decluttering. Uh, I might not have enough time to make that. The scale of my decluttering problem is so huge. It might take me longer um, to make than a week or two. Um, so you may just get something on kayaking instead. But it's certainly going to be a bit lighter than this one. This one's been quite a heavy one. And, and also a fairly niche audience in that, you know, it's mostly for the people in the UK. Um, Though I have some American friends who always show probably more interest in our politics than we do. But hopefully we'll catch you then and I haven't scared you off with this. I am just itching for the next general election when my Tory candidate comes round knocking on the door because I am going to slap that bugger so feckin' hard.